so don't go near the floor, floorboards. I'm back out. That's my freaking PDA told me to. If I die and get mauled by a dog, guess it's the PDA. Okay, let's try looking for more bugs. Gotta be something I'm missing. just here. I don't know where I would need to go to do this. Where there's owl noises in the daytime. Okay, I'm back at the cemetery again. Why is there an owl in broad daylight? Okay, I'm lost again.
this is in February, so he would be winter. Winter is birds. Okay. So, Lucy should be leaves. No, Lucy should be. Yeah, Lucy should be leaves. Iggy should be deer. And Xander should be swans. Ooh. Forward. Deer? That's not right. <coughs> so that's not correct. That's swans. This should be leaves. Iggy is right. Vitus is right. Lucy and Xander are wrong. Need my nails. It's no. still not fixed. Yeah, no, no, no kidding. Oh, so you're just gonna keep carrying? Okay, Lucy, 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 Nancy. I have so much stuff I need to do. Okay. I need to find one more freaking bug. For bugs, but I'm desperate. Uh, those look too rotten. Bugs. to 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I need one more. Are you kidding me? I looked here. I looked here, I think. I would hear... Big stone back there, where can I go to that one? I looked here. Dang it! Okay, I'm getting frustrated by this. again. I spend my entire life getting lost in these stupid woods. Okay. Give me my camo lady. coming along. Got him right here. Well now, you done all right for a city gal. Here you go. Hope whatever you're hiding from won't catch you. <laughs> How you holding up? Any word from Tucker what's his name? He hasn't been by to move that tree yet. I'll give him another call. But like I said, the man marches to the beat of another drummer. A very slow drummer. Guess I'll see you later. I guess you will. Why am I going to uh, go behind birds with my camo gear? I'm just clicking around in a circle. <laughs> I should know this by now.
go the other side of the woods and then find that stupid tanager. Nope. That's by the cemetery, isn't he? that one noise I keep thinking I'm hearing a hawk and I'm not. Oh, I want this. I know what I gotta do. I think I remember this. I need to go back to where that big fancy stone is. I think that's where the hawk shows up. But I don't know how to get back there. challenges that feel so freaking random. Okay. Nope, no hawks. I don't see any hawks. You can read in my mind. Okay, I think I want to go call Bess and George. Maybe Sally? This caller ID stuff is going to take some getting used to. I'm here too, Nan. What's going on? Okay. Moon Lake is gorgeous, but it's so remote. The park ranger is the closest thing they have to a sheriff around here. Park ranger? What's he like? Which, as we all know, is Bess's way of saying, park ranger? Is he cute? <laughs> Not true, George. Nancy thinks everybody's cute, so what will be the point? Anyway, Nancy, you were saying? His name's Jeff Akers. He's very helpful, polite, efficient, knowledgeable. Sounds boring. 
In fact, he probably knows more about the area than all the other residents of Moon Lake combined. Sounds very boring. Let's hear about these alleged ghost dogs. He thinks they're just plain old dogs that for some reason like to run around at night scaring people. And what does Detective Drew think about the dogs? I think Sally had good reason to be scared of them. I don't blame her for leaving. Which leads me to think that maybe that was the whole idea. Somebody had those dogs attack Sally in order to scare her away? Why would anybody do that? She was there for less than a month. You'd have to be a total creep to make enemies that fast. And Sally's one of the nicest people I know. Ooh, Nancy! Speaking of cute guys, Frank and Joe Hardy called. I filled them in on where you are and what you're doing, and they're dying to hear from you. Great. Did they leave a yes. number? Yes. Their number is 280-555-4865. Best didn't recognize it when they called and almost didn't answer the phone. Good thing my cousin here has a memory like an elephant tongue. What's that supposed to mean? Call them, Nancy. They're dying to hear from you. But remember, Frank's cute and all that, but George and I want to hear from you, too. Yeah. No fair discussing the case with them from now on and not with us. Promise you'll keep us up to speed? <laughs> I promise. This bird watcher I met has got me taking pictures of birds for some <coughs> survey he's doing. He's a bit of a grump. Does he live nearby? No, he just kind of hangs out in the woods. In fact, I only see him at night. Interesting. He's in the woods at night. The dogs are in the woods at night. Could he have had a reason for wanting Sally out of the Malone house? As far as I know, he and Sally were on good terms. But I also know that Red doesn't seem to have much use for any life form that doesn't molt. He sounds like my uncle Zach. He's into birds. Only he doesn't watch them. He hunts them, then shoots them. I never really liked my uncle Zach. <coughs> Did I mention that all the water in Sally's house comes from a well? <coughs> Ew, really? Does it taste like rotten eggs? Not all well water tastes like rotten eggs. Yes, Beth. it does. I don't know if it does or not. Because the well is so old, I need to get the water tested before I drink it. Good plan. Nothing will wreck your day faster than a nice tall glass of contaminated water. I could yes, sure use a nice a hint. big hint right about now. I can't believe the key to the padlock just fell apart like that. I know. The lid to the crate is on hinges, right? Oh. Just use your screwdriver. Take the screws out of the hinges. And lift the lid. I'm so dumb. Bye, you guys. Don't be a stranger. Take care. Well, I'm calling the Hardy Boys right the brick now. Hello? Hey, Joe. It's Nancy. Nancy? How's it going? Uh, no, wait. Don't answer that. Talk about the weather or something. The weather? Yeah. That'll give me time to grab the other phone and take it outside. Frank's washing the car. He'll kill me if he misses anything. Here, wait a sec. Take a break, it's Nancy. Hang on. He's putting the hose down. He's drying his hands. He's walking over. Nancy, hi. What's up? Bess and George say you've got another mystery on your hands. Or should we say, on your paws. They told you about the dogs? We made them tell us everything. Pumped them dry. As you may have guessed, we're not exactly rolling in detective work here. So Are you're you living vicariously through me. It's not the first time, sad to say. What conclusions have you reached so far, Detective? If nothing else, those ghost dogs are very well trained. I'm watching to see who owns and or trains dogs around here. Good plan. But don't forget, a really smart perpetrator is going to make it look like he or she has no connection to dogs whatsoever. But then a really, really smart perp might have dogs all over the place and not bother to hide it, because he or she would figure you'd never suspect anyone so obvious. Emily Griffin doesn't seem to have any dogs. Uh-oh. Move her up on your suspect list. I'd move her down. You know, Joe, something tells me we're not helping. I'm convinced that someone is using those ghost dogs to scare Sally into abandoning Malone's house. If I can just figure out why, I might be able to figure out who. Never hurts to look for motive. Malone and his four dogs are supposedly buried in a little cemetery near the house. They've all got headstones inscribed with when they were born and when they died. That's interesting. Did Malone have family? Not that I'm aware of. Ooh. Then who had the tombstones inscribed? That's exactly what I was wondering. Sounds like this latest puzzle of yours is still missing a few pieces. Later, guys. Watch out for dogs. Just watch out, period.
Ah. Nothing else in here? Big good. It's way too dark down there. It's way too dark down there. Lantern? A flashlight? Must be missing something. Like I said, I knew there was a freaking map. Damn it. But now I found it. Oh well. You better have freaking batteries. That's all I have to say, you stupid flashlight. You better have batteries in you because I want to go do a thing. Oh, yeah. I didn't even see what that was. Oh, hell no. Nah. Oh, I wasn't ready for that. Oh, William Akers. <clears throat> I wonder if he's related to Jeff Akers. Mr. Malone has never spent a night in jail and he never will, said William Akers. And you know why? Because he's just an ordinary Joe trying to run an ordinary business. He said this with such conviction that for a moment this reporter honestly thought Akers was talking about somebody other than Mickey Malone, a notorious gangster, resting on the porch of Malone's getaway home at Moon Lake, having Bushwhack through thick brush from the east side of the lake to avoid detection and probably eviction by his bodyguards. And I was talking to the man who, according to police, is the only person Malone trusts. I know. I ought 
knows him every day, goes on, if he doesn't deserve all the grief you newspaper hacks get from me. He's a rich man because his laundromats are fine establishments and people like to wash their clothes there. All this talk about him being a bootlegger is just plain hogwash. When I asked if I'm willing to I thought I talked to Malone Acres and Malone was out walking. Like I said, he's an ordinary guy who likes to do ordinary things. When I asked him to wait for him, he said, What for anything you want to know about Becky Malone? I can tell you I've worked for him for 15 years. When I, when I said all I wanted was the truth, he said, Then you're in luck because that's what I just told you. And now you suggest, and now I suggest you leave him if he's a swell guy, but he's got these four big dogs I see, and sometimes they don't mind so good. <laughs> I took the hint and left, but as I struggled through the brush to get back to my car, I realized something Acres hadn't told me about Mickey Malone. What, I mean, about, I realized something. Acres hadn't told me the truth about what Mickey Malone did. I knew that, but he had told me the important truth when it came to Mickey Malone, what Mickey Malone was. Someone who had at least one extremely loyal employee. I asked you good citizens of Philadelphia how many legitimate businesses can, businessmen can say the same thing. Interesting. <gasps> Jeez. Okay. Well, that's fun. That was fun. <sighs> I think I know what I'm supposed to do with this. A dog. That's Yogi. Yogi! Who never goes out unless he's on a leash. Park oh. rules. The <laughs> park ranger has a dog named Yogi. I can't. I couldn't help but notice that he's about <clears throat> the same size as those ghost dogs were. I hope you're not suggesting I trained Yogi to run around in the middle of the night barking and attacking houses. I found a newspaper dating back to 1927 in Sally's house. Since you're kind of an expert on the history of Moon Lake, do you mind if I ask you some questions about Mickey Malone? Not at all. The article mentioned that a man named William Akers used to work for Malone. Is he a relative of yours? No. Quite a coincidence, I'll admit, but no. I am in no way related to the head flunky of some two-bit gangster and his gang of thugs. Pardon me if I don't believe you. I found this old picture in Sally's house. Do you know who these people are? The man is Mickey Malone, I know that. I'm guessing that this is his girlfriend, uh, Vivian Burnett, I think her name was. And judging by the year of that brand new Ford in the background, I'd say the picture was taken in 1928. She was probably as familiar with Malone's house and his dogs as he was. Think there's any chance she's still alive? Tell you what, Miss Drew. Why don't I go through my files and see what I can dig up on this mystery woman? I'm a busy man, but like I always say, I'm here to serve. When and why was Malone arrested? I'm sorry, Ms. Drew. As usual, I'm a little pressed for time. If you have more questions, why don't you sit down at the computer and peruse the Moon Lake database of fascinating factoids that I've put together? Hmm. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem. Okay, let's take a look at the computer that I didn't check out earlier. Oh, not bad. Try for the first resins. Monopé. <clears throat> Monopé. Try one of the server of Algonquin speaking tribes that populated the northeastern US for several hundreds, if not thousands, of years. 
<clears throat> Not by they lumped the tribe in with the other Algonquins and tribes. Because this larger group is the Delaware Indians. This is because many of the Algonquin speaking tribe lived in the large drainage basin of Delaware River. Delaware. Okay, that makes sense. Interesting. Didn't know that. Oop, the dogs. Florin Zigfeld, sweet. Oh darn, I was hoping that would play part in it. <laughs> ben Franklin spent the summer of 1744? Convicted of tax evasion in 1933 and sent to prison where he eventually died. That's all they got. Uh, I'll come. The house was part of the Underground Railroad. Hmm, that's interesting. Group of private citizens mostly from Philadelphia for the Moonlight Conservancy. Became a state park in 1930. Ooh. They want to be able to have everybody walk around the park. That's interesting. CCC built the trails in the park. Tyrone Pinky, I know where that is. Oh my god, he went to Penn State. <laughs> Pretty sure these are going to be important. Do I know how? Nope. But I will find out. <clears throat> Mm, 
these are mostly the same ones. <laughs> Whoopsies. I knew how to do that. <clears throat> Bane of my existence. The ducks. Go off. It's pretty. Is I don't know if Moon Lake is a real place. I don't think it is. Because <laughs> I'd go there. These are on the wall, too. You're back. What happened to Akers and the rest of Malone's gang after he went to prison? <laughs> Fortunately for Moon Lake, they all left and went their separate ways. Have you gotten the results back from that water sample I left with you? I meant to call the Department of Health today for a status report, but frankly, I've been way too busy. <laughs> the reason I am laughing is because I work for the Pennsylvania Department of Health, and that made me laugh. <laughs> Sounds like Moon Lake could use two rangers. If I were in charge of just ten more acres of parkland, they'd give me an assistant, and I could devote more time to the acquisition of more land and eventually put Moon Lake on the map as one of the biggest, most popular parks in the state. Why didn't the Parks Department buy the Malone property instead of Sally? She outbid them, the cheapskates. Well, if those dogs scare Sally away for good, other people are bound to think twice about buying the place. The bank will lower its price and you'll uh -huh. have your land. You're insinuating things again, Miss Drew. I didn't mean to insult you. In fact, is there anything I can do to help you out? Tell you what, if you're serious about making amends, there's some boxes by the computer labeled oh, with dates. Shoot, heck, I'll get They're from this. the estate of a local history buff. She kept everything from newspaper clippings to old photos to recipes for apple crisp. She put everything in envelopes, then numbered them by year Knew using it. Roman numerals. Just put the envelopes in order by year with the earliest date in front. Oh, and if you're rusty on Roman numerals, there's an entry on them in the computer. Okay, if I read what's in the envelopes? Don't go reading anything until you're through. Or take my word for it, you'll never get finished. I've been trying to take pictures of birds for this guy named Red Knot. Ever met him? Oh, yes. The Birdman. I'd stay away from him if I were you. Why? Is something wrong with him? He's a fanatic. He's got it in his head that Moon Lake would be the best bird-watching venue in the world except for one thing. Too many people. Believe me, if there was a way to get this park shut down and all the homes on the lake torn down, he'd do it in an instant. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. Let's see. Jeff said the envelope with the earliest date goes down in the front of each box. Okay. All right. Now for my trusty notes. M C M. MCM. MCMXI one thousand. Oh, this is nineteen hundred. This is nineteen ten. No, that's wrong. Okay. Okay, this is what I needed. <laughs> I'm 
the Romans made one slightly tricky adjustment. Okay. In Roman numerals, any time a letter representing a smaller number is placed in front of, to the left of a letter representing a larger number, the smaller number is subtracted from the larger number. For instance, instead of writing four as I, 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 the Romans would have read it as I, five. Five minus one, which equals four. Thus, the number nine is expressed as I, X. X, um, <clears throat> 10 less than 50, 1 less than 10. Okay. Okay. And I'm crazy. This is wrong. Now that they're all okay. sorted, I can do some reading. <laughs> yes. Okay. <clears throat> How do we get them out of here? There's a gangster about to become Moon Lake's newest resident. Animals are flying thick and fast that Mickey Malone, self proclaimed captain of industry with far more ties to gambers and sm gambers. <laughs> gamblers and smugglers than legitimate businessmen is the best house on the North Shore of Moon Lake. I when it started last June when the 10 acre property on which the house was being built was purchased by Philadelphia Dungeon Fuds, a police owned by Malone, which is widely believed to be merely a front for his criminal undertakings. Secrecy has shrouded the project ever since construction began in October of last year. Four men in a locked gate block the driveway leading to the site. Unauthorized persons and vehicles are summarily, summarily turned away. Day and night security guards patrol the heavily wooded lakefront property. Several large trucks strategically parked obscure any and all views from the site from the water. Even workmen have been sworn to silence when asked if Mickey Malone was indeed building a house on Moon Lake. Walden Mathias, the agent and spearheading Department of Justice investigation of Malone's activities, had only this to say. If he is, I suggest you live it up while he can because the place we're, go we're going to be sending him in on no beach and is going to be there for a real long time. <laughs> Mr. Malone cannot be reached for comment. Gangster nabbed at Moon Lake residence. Pajamas. Mickey Malone, a Philadelphia businessman, one considered by police to be a bootlegger and a racketeer, finally felt the sting of the sword of justice when he was arrested next morning at his house on Moon Lake. Careful to attack dogs at bay, agents from the IRS and the department. That's a picture of me. Okay, of justice, raided the lakefront home at dawn. But Tim Malone and his henchmen completely by surprise within seconds when Malone was handcuffed wearing only an overcoat over his pajamas he slept out the door and into the leading car. He was driven directly to Philadelphia where he was jailed on charges of tax evasion conspiracy to violate prohibition laws. The police have been wise to Malone's criminal activities for years, but three previous attempts to incarcerate him failed miserably with Malone's shadowy associates through bribes and threats, forced prosecution witnesses to recant their stories. At this time, the federal agents intend to rely on ledgers and tax returns to prove their case since 1927, when it was determined that the income gained through illegal means is taxable. Authorities have been eager to use this ruling to make thugs like Malone pay for their crimes. Mickey Malone's been making us look like fools for a long time, declared Bureau of Investigation Agent Waldo Mathias, but today the good guys found like the last laugh. Malone loudly and repeatedly proven that he'd done nothing wrong as he was led to jail. However, his protestations of innocence ended abruptly when not apparently wish apparently not wishing to be photographing his pajamas, Malone took a swing at the press photographer. He was quickly subdued. Oh, 
health on. <laughs> I know where that is too. 41, died in mobster. I'm in New York, New Jersey, in 1899, I'm alone, I'm not dozen such, and uh, laundry mats and dry cleaners that allowed me to disguise and just switch on. He made a racketeer, committed other gangsters, I'm alone, I can relate to a little profile. His desire for privacy was enforced by his four large dogs, who nevertheless decide. Although he was rumored to be involved in everything from rum running to gold heist, he never spent a single night in jail until he was arrested for tax evasion in 1932. He was convicted of the following year and sentenced to eight years in federal prison. He died just too much before he was just released. See if I can talk to Ranger Acres again. And if I can, I'll talk to him. If I can't, okay. you're back. I finished putting all those envelopes in order. Excellent. Thank you, Miss Drew. And to show my gratitude, I've got something for you. It doesn't involve Roman numerals, does it? No, it's an honorary Junior Park Ranger pin. Really? I keep them on hand so I can give them really? out to children whom I see demonstrating respect Do I look for like park a child? And regulations. A little bit of positive reinforcement. Unfortunately, I don't get to give them out that often. Oh, gee, thanks, Ranger Acres. <laughs> thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. 